Generation 1 of Pokemon introduced us to the classic rock-scissors-paper matchup of fire, water, and grass. And it wasn't just the starters in Pokemon Red and Blue, no. There was an entire set of pseudo-legendary Pokemon in these games that followed the same paradigm. We already saw the first of these Pokemon, Arcanine. A Pokemon with great base stats, but no moveset and terrible typing, plus being in the slow level up group meant that it really struggled in the late game of a solo challenge. Let's go to the opposite end. Today, we have a Pokemon that has a much better typing, a much better moveset, and one of the best stats in the game with its defense, Cloyster. Cloyster's Clamp is probably going to be the MVP of this entire run, given that it's a water type wrapping move that's going to synergize amazingly when we get toxic. And its Stab Ice Beam and Blizzard is probably going to enable it to one-shot Pokemon many levels higher. So with that being said, let's get into it. And by the end of this video, I'm going to show you what I think is the single most broken strategy in the entire game. And we'll just have to see if you guys agree. Go ahead and pl place your guess what you think it is down in the comment section below. With that being said, let's get into the challenge, starting with our cloister. And today we've got to give a huge shout out to my guy, Andrew Palmer, who dropped a super thanks on a previous video. Andrew, thank you so much. Today we are naming our character for you. With that being said, let's go. So here we go. We are going to name our character today, Andrew P in honor of Andrew Palmer. Thanks, man. And now let's go ahead and get our first starting Pokemon. Let's watch as Professor Oak just catches a Cloyster with one single Pokeball, and now we're just going to go into Clamp and completely wreck Rival 1. We can now move on to Viridian Forest, where it's more of the same. Clamp is so strong, and we take out the Caterpie no problem. Brock's Pokemon? They have a 4 times weakness to our moves, so Clamp basically just takes down the Geodude, and it's going to take down the Onix as soon as we hit it. There we go. We have crushed the first gym, and it really doesn't change after that. All of the trainers going through Mount Moon and going to Cerulean City just really can't do anything against us. So we can see it perfectly here right with Team Rocket, where Clamp takes down the Ekans. We use Clamp and then go into Aurora Beam to take out the Meowth, and Aurora Beam finishes off the coughing with 1 HP remaining, but that's fine. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get to Misty's Gym where Clamp might just be strong enough to be able to get through this. So here, we're gonna lead off with a Supersonic to Confuser Pokemon and then go into Clamp, and we're just whittling this Staryu down, even though it's resisted. Let's do the same strategy here on the Starmie. Let's use Supersonic to confuse it, and then just go into Clamp. And this is a place where Starmie's only going to use Tackle and Harden, and Harden does nothing against a special type move like Clamp, so there we go. So we finish her off with an Aurora Beam, and we've got two badges, and we haven't struggled at all. Now let's move on to Rival 2, and Rival 2 is no challenge. One Aurora Beam takes out the Spearow, now we're going to go into Clamp to take down the Sandshrew, to Clamp to take down the Rattata, and hey, a couple Clamps to take down the Eevee. Done and done. So with that being done, we can make our way up to Bill's house, and really, our type coverage is just so great between Aurora Beam and Clamp that we have no troubles here. Even the final last with two Oddish, Aurora Beam is one-shotting all of her Pokémon because it's super effective against grass. Grass is not a check against our Cloyster. So now we can save Bill from his Pokemon experimentations and we can go fight the single most difficult trainer in the entire game, the innocent bystand. Here his Machop is too slow, so we just clamp it down. And hey, let's just use the same strategy on Drowsy. There we go, we have finished that section and we're making our way down to the SSN. Rival 3. 
Now, Rival 3 is probably just more of the same. He, he has the same team. So, Aurora Beam, Clamp on the Rattata, Clamp on the Sandshrew, and hey, we're going to Clamp down the Eevee. This entire run is basically just going to be spamming Clamp, I think. But here we got the HM for Cut, and let's go fight Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge should be the hardest gym leader. We don't resist his moves, we don't have a super effective move, one Thunderbolt clearly takes us out, but he attacks randomly. And when he gets a run like this where he uses something like Growl, he uses an X speed, he misses, now he's gonna go for a Mega Kick, we just clamp him down and we have beaten the single hardest gym leader in this entire run. So now let's make our way through Rock Tunnel where we're really not struggling against anything. You might be saying, self-destruct hiker? Come on, this guy's never a challenge. Why is this guy a meme? We wreck him in every single run. There we go. So with that being done, let's make our way now to the Pokemon Tower where we can fight Rival 4. And Rival 4 is no problem. We have Aurora Beam to take down this Fero. Now we can go into Clamp on the Magnemite. We can clamp down the shelter, even though it's resisted, the fact that it traps it is perfect. Clamp takes down Sandshrew, and we clamp down the Eevee. Done and done. We're just not encountering any resistance here, and once we get to Celadon, we buy a fresh water and now we get access to a stronger ice move, Ice Beam. And given that it's Stab, this might be enough to get through Erika. We're just gonna have to go test this out. So we're gonna replace Aurora Beam with Ice Beam and let's go try the gym. Here, against Erika, this is the first attempt. We use Ice Beam, it's two Ice Beams to take down Tangela. One Ice Beam freezes the Weepin' Bell and now we just clamp the Gloom until we get it into a one hit KO range and then Ice Beam, done. That was easy. And when you think about it, what other gym is actually going to give us trouble in this entire run? Well, let's think about that while we go fight Team Rocket. Team Rocket is no problem. We clamp down the coughing. We're going to use an Aurora Beam to take out Meowth. And hey, we can clamp down the Ekans. Now against Giovanni himself, this is a piece of cake. Hey, we're just going to use Ice Beam to take out the Onyx. Ice Beam takes out the Rhyhorn, and now it's a couple Ice Beams to take down Persian. That was easy, easy. I'm really thinking that this might be the best Pokemon we've run in the entire game since Mewtwo. So here at the top of the Pokemon Tower, we run into Marowak, where it's an easy clamp. And Team Rocket at the top? I mean, come on. These guys don't do anything to us. One Ice Beam takes out Meowth. We're going to clamp down the Arbok and finish it with an Ice Beam. And let's just clamp down this Weezing that we outspeed. Perfect. So we have finished that section of the game and now it's just on to Rival 5, I think. Like we haven't had any trouble so far, so why should we avoid him? So here, let's try this one. Getting into the Rival 5 fight, the first Pokemon is Sandslash, which clamp is no problem. We just take it out. Now, his Cloyster is a higher level and uses Supersonic, which does present a little bit of an issue given that we can hit ourselves in confusion, but we can clamp this one down. Now, Magneton one hits us. It outspeeds and there's nothing that we can really do about that situation. So I grinded this a few more times just to see maybe we can survive one Thundershock. No. It just didn't work. Tried it a bunch of times and, and it was just a fail. So let's go fight Koga instead. Koga has three Venonats, but we outspeed in this fight. So if we can just lock them in clamp, we can probably get through. Whenever we miss though, the first and third Venonat are just going to spam Sleep Powder. And that leads to us losing a few times, but we're just grinding this out to see if we can get the luck to just get Clamp to hit multiple turns and then what is the range to actually one hit KO them with Ice Beam. So in this one, we clamp him down and then 
I just go with clamp and take out the first venonat. Here, I use a couple clamps to take out the second venonat and clamp on the third venonat. And there we go. We're all the way to Venomoth and we get the freeze. That's a guaranteed win. So now we just have to clamp it down. Done. Now, what did that do? Coming down here to fight Koga got us two additional levels and it got us Toxic. So here we can still one shot the Sand Slash and go into Toxic and Clamp on the Cloister. With Toxic and Clamp, we take it down and now a couple levels higher, we outspeed the Magneton. So we clamp it and then go to Ice Beam to finish it off. Now we're gonna go Toxic and Clamp on the Kadabra. Here, we're just not getting the luck to get the hit, but there we finally go. We take it down, Toxic, and we take a Fire Spin, but that's okay. We go into Clamp and we finish off the Flareon. Done and done. Now let's get back to Team Rocket, where this is just the easiest run ever. We've only really struggled just a little bit on Lieutenant Surge, just a little bit on Koga. And once we got Toxic, Rival 5 was no problem at all. Here, Giovanni, he does have Double Kick on his Nidorino and his Nidoqueen, but we just take Nidorino down, and it's Toxic and Clamp to take down the Persian. Rhyhorn is a one-shot, and now Nidoqueen. It takes two Ice Beams, but that's fine. We get through, no problem. So now let's try Sabrina, where... Again, Sabrina is not super easy, but it only takes a couple attempts. Here in this one, we just clamp down the Abra. And we have taken an accuracy drop, but that's okay. We get now to Kadabra, where the strategy is to get Toxic on it. If we can get Toxic to hit, and now we're just hoping to clamp it and whittle down its HP. Now, on the Alakazam, same thing. Toxic into Clamp. Anytime we can get this combo, we've got 3 HP, but when she can't move and she's just gaining more and more damage every turn, we can take her down. So now it's time to go through and just pick up all the items that we need. We've got to get the Surf HM. I'm not going to replace Clamp with Surf though, because Clamp has way too much usefulness in this run, and we don't really want to forget any of our other moves. Ice Beam is good. Toxic is amazing, and Withdrawal is our batch boosting move, so we're just going to keep our move set as is. We go to the power plant in order to pick up the Mega Elixir and to get the rare candy and the PP up that are there. And it's always kind of fun to just come up here and just have a just passing moment with the Zapdos. We're not going to fight it. We're not going to catch it. We're just going to pass. So now, going down to Cinnabar, we pick up another broken move, Blizzard. That's going to be super useful later in the run, and we're going to get two more rare candies, so we've got access to a lot of level up potential if we need it. Now with the secret key, we can make our way over to Blaine, and Blaine is probably not going to be too hard, right? I mean, we've got Clamp. The problem is that we're outsped, and Fire type is neutrally effective against us. So here, when he uses Fire Spin, it's doing really good damage, and we get taken down. Okay, that was just a fluke. Let's go ahead and use Toxic. Let's set up our badge boost so that we outspeed. And we're just going to crush his team? No. We get taken out again by a Flamethrower. This is the problem in a lot of these runs. Blaine is an absolute savage. He has great critical hit chances. He's got really good speed on his Pokemon. And stab fire moves like Flamethrower and Fire Blast do a lot more than you would expect, even to Pokemon that resist those moves, whether it's Rhydon or Cloyster. We're getting wrecked here. So I had to fight this one a ton of times. And really, I mean, other than going to something like Double Team or using our rare candies, there's just no way to get any advantage and get through this fight any quicker. So really what I decided was, you know what, I've got to go for the freeze on the Ninetales. If we freeze Ninetales, then we'll have a guaranteed chance to set up our badge boost with Withdraw, and we can just whittle his team down, hopefully, at that point. 
so let's see how many attempts this takes because this is an absolute grind. We're, we're getting to Arcanine sometimes, but Arcanine is just one-shotting us when we get there. So, yeah. Here, even when we get the freeze a few times, you can see we still get taken out because this is not an easy or consistent fight. Here in this one, we do get the freeze turn one. Let's set up our six withdraws. And let's just see, because if we can't get through here, we're just going to have to use rare candies to level up, I think. So there, we take that one down. Now we outspeed Rapidash. Perfect. But we level up. So we no longer outspeed, but we get a reflect and we get the clamp. He hit us, but we survived. There we go. We have beaten that gym and we can make our way to Giovanni. Giovanni's kind of interesting because we've got great defense, but we're really underleveled at this point because we're in the slow level up group. Other Pokemon could be getting here at level 44, 45. No, we're at level 39. What we're going to do here is start by freezing the Doug Trio. It just barely survived. That's ridiculous. Now we're going to set up all of our withdrawals and clamp it down. Here, we're going to use Clamp on Persian to just take it out as quick as possible and finish it with an Ice Beam. One Ice Beam takes out Nidoqueen, but now we level up. So, we are outsped, but we get the Clamp on Nidoking, that's perfect. And once we get to ride on, its Rock Slide did basically nothing, and we clamped it down. Perfect. We are to rival 6. Without Double Team, this is great. Now, we're going to lead off here on the rival, with Clamp to take down the Sand Slash. Ice Beam one-shots Execute. And now, of course, it's Toxic. We're gonna actually set up our withdrawals right here on the Cloister while it's taking Toxic damage. Now, can we outspeed the Magneton? We do, but we missed. Okay, we barely survived, but we're moving on to Kadabra. Can we just not get the miss? Okay, we got taken out. Let's try this a couple more times. We can see that we're getting all the way to Flareon even without too much difficulty. The problem is that Flareon will use Flamethrower and it just wrecks us. So here, let's try this again. We're going to clamp down the Sand Slash. We one shot the Execute and now Toxic and Clamp here on the Cloister. Now against this Magneton, we're actually just going to clamp it and take it down as quick as possible. There we go. Now, we're going to try to set up Toxic and Clamp here on the Kadabra. We haven't even gone for Badge Boost. Uh, it was much better to just go all in and attack. And here we clamp the Flareon and we take it down. So there we go. We're to the Elite Four. And really, only a couple of challenges. Blaine was by far the biggest challenge in this run so far. Here against Lorelei, we can just start off with a basic strategy, Toxic and Clamp. So here we're going to try to take down this Dugong as quick as possible, but we do want to set up our badge boost. We get through it, now Toxic and Clamp on the enemy Cloister, which should take it down in just a few hits, there we go. And Toxic, we take a huge Psychic, but we've got Toxic, we've got Clamp, we take down Slowbro. Here, Toxic, we took a double slap from the Jinx, but it did basically nothing because of our huge defense stat. And we're just trying to whittle this one down. We're getting really low. We're all the way down to 4 HP. We take a body slam and we get knocked out by the Lapras. Still, that wasn't really that bad. We can see that this is going to be possible if we just get the right ranges. And that's my first attempt, so we just have to figure out the best strategy. So here in this one, I'm going to lead off with Toxic and go straight into Clamp on the Dugong. I'm not even going to set up there. Instead, now I'm going to set up Toxic once I don't hit myself in Confusion, and I'm actually going to set up my withdrawals here on the Cloister. We're basically trying to manipulate our badge boosts. Now, when we do this, we're able to take Cloister down, and here we got to Slowbro, but we leveled up. So we have no badge boost glitch anymore, but we are able to slowly whittle it down. She uses super potions, but that's fine. We just take her out. Now, can we survive here against the Jinx? We get toxic and we go into clamp. 
and we're able to take it out with 52 HP remaining. We get confused by the Lapras, but we got Toxic. Can we make this work? We're clamping it, and there she goes. Lorelei's done. Not really that challenging. Let's move on to Bruno, who... Yeah, Bruno? When was he ever a challenge, right? I mean, fighting is super effective against ice, but... Yeah, in this one, we're just gonna go straight for the withdraw first to raise our defense. Because once we get our six defense boosts on, we have a massive defense stat. Meaning we're not worried about rock or fighting type moves really at that point. And we clamp all of his Pokemon down. And yeah, we're down to 18 HP, but we are out speeding on the Machamp and we take it out. So there we go. That's two Elite Four members done with basically no difficulty. Let's move on to Agatha. Agatha can present a little bit of a problem here because she uses special type moves. And if there's one weakness to our Cloyster, it's the fact that we have weak special. On top of that, her first Gengar knows Mega Drain, which can absolutely wreck us here. So we're just gonna have to get a run where we get the right kind of luck to not get taken out super quickly. This one takes a bit of grinding, but we are getting all the way to the last Gengar sometimes, so it's probably possible. In this one, we start by setting up our a couple of our withdrawals, and then we take out the Golbat, and now we're going to use Ice Beam to take down the Gengar. Perfect. Now on the Haunter, we go ahead and use Ice Beam and Clamp, and we're just trying to whittle this one down. It's perfectly fine, it goes out, and we're going to use Clamp, but she switches to the last Gengar. Okay, so now we get the Freeze, and we're just going to set up all of our badge boosts here, because we don't have that much PP remaining, but if we get our badge boost, we're going to be strong enough to take her out. We didn't want to set these up earlier because Golbat knows Toxic and the first Gengar knows Mega Drain. But here we take the last Gengar out, she switches back to Arbok, and we've run out of attack PP, but her Arbok is frozen. So we just have to use up all of our withdrawals and all of our Toxics, and we are going to have to struggle this Arbok down. This is stupid, but... It's a perfectly fine situation for us. I mean, once we get into struggle, we're going to probably have enough HP with 71 HP remaining to take this one out. This looks like the Brock Minimum Battle series video that I just put out. Anyway, we struggle her down, and there we go. Three Elite Four members done. It's on to Lance. Lance should be the easiest of the Elite Four. I mean, he's... A dragon type trainer and we've got stab ice beam so here it really just comes down to the gyarados we're gonna try a bunch of different strategies when to poison it when to use clamp basically i'm just trying to find the best ranges here so in this one it's just a matter of grinding. This is the way that I figure out my strategies. I just grind through the fight a few times, but I'm making little tweaks each time to see what works. In this one, I lead off with a couple of withdrawals. Now I go into Toxic and Clamp. That's because it uses Hyper Beam. We take it down. Now we take down each of the Dragonairs with a single shot. And now it's just, can we survive against the Aerodactyl? Here we take a wing attack, but we get it in Clamp. And now it takes us down. Clamp was probably the wrong move. We really probably should have just used Ice Beam. Let's try again. Set up a couple of withdrawals and go into Toxic and Clamp. And once we get the ranges, we should be able to take this one down. He uses a Hyper Potion, but it doesn't matter. A single Ice Beam takes out each of the Dragonairs. Now we use a withdrawal here to hopefully survive and the Aerodactyl had to recharge, so that was perfect, and we got the miss from Dragonite, and we knocked it out. There we go. That was pretty lucky, but we did get through Lance. We're all the way to the champion. And here against the champion, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna, of course, think about when to add Blizzard, 
Initially, I went in with Ice Beam. I just wanted to see if it would work. It has more PP. But ultimately, I changed to Blizzard because Blizzard is going to have a better shot, better ranges of getting through the Sand Slash quickly. Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get through his team, but we have a little bit of a problem. You see, we level up twice in this battle, meaning we can't just set up our badge boosts at the beginning. So we really need to set up our badge boosts on Alakazam. However, Alakazam has an amazing special stat and its psychic can one-shot us, even though we have no weakness to it. It's because we're just so underleveled at this point. So let's see what we can do. But basically, you can kind of see in the sped up footage, I'm starting to try to freeze the Alakazam so I can set up. And when I do, I start to get deeper and deeper runs into his team. So this one's just a grind. And the more we grind, the better it gets, but we're still not quite getting to the end. We've gotten all the way to Cloyster, but we've yet to see a Flareon. Let's see if this is the one though. So here, we lead off with a Blizzard. It's one shot on Sandslash. We managed to get the freeze on Alakazam, so we're gonna set up our withdrawals. And can we get this one down? We're going into Clamp. We're hoping that that will do it. He uses a full restore. But we've got our badge boost, so we outspeed, and we managed to take it down. Now it's a blizzard on an Executor, that's fine. And we're gonna clamp down the Magneton, and a blizzard takes it out. Now, it has to be Toxic and Clamp here on the Cloister. That's the only option. But now we level up. And we're outsped, and a single flamethrower knocks us out from the Flareon. That's ridiculous. Like, I was just trying to think, what do I do here? I mean, we got all the way to the end, and we should have a type advantage, and it just didn't work. So let's try this one again. I mean, that was clearly just bad luck. We take out the Sand Slash. We get the freeze on Alakazam. We still got good HP. Let's just see if we can grind this one down. So we set up all our badge boosts. We're going to go into clamp again. This time we don't get a full restore. Perfect. We one shot the Executor. Let's clamp down this Magneton. Toxic. And let's go into clamp here on the Cloister. And again, we're all the way to Flareon. And it one shots us. That's ridiculous. Who would have thought that Flareon would be the wall against a Cloister? Like... We should have a type advantage there. We've got a super effective move, and if the game AI wasn't so quirky, this would probably be fine, or he'd at least be randomizing between all of his moves. But that's not how Gen 1 AI works. Gen 1 AI always looks at only one of your types when it decides whether or not to use an attack or not. In this case, it's looking at our ice type, meaning that the Flareon is thinking that we are ice type and it should only use fire type moves. Even though if it was the opposite and it looked at our water typing, it would think that it should never use water type moves. This is kind of ridiculous. And I get really stubborn saying, I don't want to level up. I don't want to use double team. Let's just grind this out until we get the luck to win. So here we go, we're gonna try to set up here on the Alakazam, we're gonna get the freeze, and now we're gonna start setting up a few of our withdrawals, and hopefully we can get all the way again to the end. We take it down, now Blizzard does not actually one-shot Executor, it's a range, so we take Leech Seed. This is bad. So now we're gonna try to take down this Magneton, and we get through that, but with Leech Seed, we might not be able to get through the Cloister even. We've got Toxic set up, we're using Clamp, 33 HP. <sighs> we get knocked out again. This is so ridiculous. Like seriously, Flareon is supposed to be the worst of the rival's teams. Like that is the most common opinion 
on the internet that I can find is that everybody thinks Jolteon's the best and Vaporeon's the second best, and they say Flareon, uh, Flareon's the worst. Like, why would you want to go up against that team? And yet Flareon is the Pokemon that is absolutely wrecking us here. And it all really comes just down to speed. If we could outspeed the Flareon, this would be completely trivial. And that's why there are other Pokémon that are capable of using this strategy and wrecking at this point. Especially Pokémon that level up faster than Pokémon in the slow level up group. They're going to be 4 to 5, even as much as 8 levels higher naturally at this point. Of course, depending on where we use our rare candies. But that still leaves us in a situation where they're likely to have better speed and they're likely to be able to just take out the Flareon with no problem. So here, all we have left is to grind because I'm really stubborn and I don't want to level up. I don't want to just add double team or substitute. I mean, double teams, what would we add it over? Withdraw? I mean, withdrawals are a badge boosting move, so we would just be adding the badge boost for double team and hoping for the misses. That's it. And... A move like Mimic doesn't really do anything. What are we going to Mimic? There's nothing useful to take off of his team. So you might say Hypnosis, but really Hypnosis and Toxic just don't work together. So I was getting really, really frustrated at this point because here I've played this run for a couple hours and I spent just an hour here on the champion. So here in this one, we're going to try to take down the Sand Slash, and we've used one rare candy, hoping that we can get to the Cloister and set up there instead. We freeze the Alakazam, and we're going to take it down, but we haven't set up all of our withdrawals. And what that means is that we don't want shot Exeggutor. So we take a Leech Seed again, but maybe that's fine. Let's just get through the Magneton. We're going to whittle it down. There we go. Now Cloister. Toxic. And we're going for Clamp, you know, that's the strategy here, is Toxic and Clamp. We're getting really low on HP, but maybe we can outspeed? No, the one level did not help. And look, folks, you know me. I know my reputation in this community. I am the broken strategies guy. I am the guy that you watch to just knows how to make this game stupid easy by wrecking the AI and just using movesets that are completely ridiculous. But there's one strategy that I absolutely hate. There's one strategy that I'm so adamantly against that I've made it the cornerstone of my channel to avoid doing this. And it's what I see everybody else do in this situation, and it frustrates me beyond all get out. Because there is one way that we can make these games an absolute cakewalk. There's one way that we can make it so that you could hand the game to one of my five-year-old kindergarten kids at the Japanese school where I teach, and they could beat the champion. And you know what that is. All we have to do is spam the rare candies that are left in our bag and level up. And I don't want to do that, but it's getting pretty clear that that's the strategy because all we need to do is avoid leveling up in the middle of the battle. But one rare candy or two rare candies is not enough because we're in this slow level up group. We're gonna get so much experience here because we're so under leveled that we're basically always going to level up unless we spam all of our rare candies. So I'm trying to get here at level 49, but we're still leveling up in the middle of the battle at Cloister. It's just not working. So I'm going to grind this a few more times, but if we don't get one here, I mean, like you can see Lance just freaking out there because he knows that, dude, you're not making it through this fight. But I really want to just win without having to do that. Without having to just level up to win. So I grind it and grind it and grind it and grind it. And 
This is just ridiculous. How is it that the easiest run until this point breaks down at the champion? I really just cannot understand it. So here we go. Yeah, you see the double team TM in my bag, but we're not going to use that because I know the number of hateful comments I'll get down below if I do that instead. So here we're going to use the rest of our rare candies. We actually missed one rare candy in Silphco, but that's fine. In this one, Blizzard's one-shot Sand Slash. That's no problem. We still freeze the Alakazam, and we get our free setup here with Withdraw. And now Clamp. Let's just take it out. One Blizzard takes out Exeggutor. We clamp down the Magneton. Here, it's going to be Toxic and Clamp. And we don't really have anything to worry about. Yeah, we got 23 HP. Doesn't matter. Here, we clamp down the Flareon. And there we go. This is the worst I've felt about beating the game in months. Because we should have not had to do that. And really, in normal times, I would just drop double team in the place of withdraw, and that would be a win. But, hey. Anyway, let's go now for Mewtwo. And Mewtwo's very easy, as long as we don't take a Psychic. Psychic will one-shot us, but without a Psychic, Clamp and Toxic takes it down, and there we go. So, we have beaten the game with Cloyster, but Cloyster's promise broke down at the end. And the only way to get through other than Double Team was to just level up. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you appreciated that I didn't just level up. 